Okay, none of us know where we'll end up, but thank you for the first step. Thank you, thank you for expressing so eloquently the importance of this to future generations. Uh, our grandfather, who went down there a century ago, it comes from a century into the long time. And a century hence, we have to start thinking about the best important dimension here tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Our next speaker is Arnie Campbell, who's from the Otter Point and Charity Residents and Rate Carriage Association. And he's going to give us an overview of the lands in question uh, so that everyone has a, an idea of exactly what we're talking about. Arnie, over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, sounds like this mic is lit up, so that's good. Um, I'm going to um, give you the overview. For many of you, well, that's pretty loud, isn't it? Let me take it a little bit. How's that? Is that better there? Okay. Um, for many of you um, who recognize the names Jordan River and Sooth and Otter Point and Shirley, um, I want to put those communities in context because you might not realize the massive area that lies west of Victoria. And the map that we're looking at here uh, is the Wanda Fuga electoral area. And uh, Sooth, which is over here, is incorporated, has been for about 10 years now. Uh, but the rest of this area, the Malahan, uh, this area here, Port Renfrew, uh, the Jordan River, Shirley, and Honor Point, um, are unincorporated communities. And uh, our only representation is an elected regional director. We do not have a mayor and council. The reason I'm saying that is that that poses some issues for us with respect to governance. Uh, we do not have the control over our land that many of you have that live within municipalities in the Greater Victoria area. In fact, we are a creature of the CRD. So having said that, let me just break down the area a bit geographically so that as other speakers follow me, you can perhaps understand the areas that they're referring to. The, um, the largest part of the electoral area is this large section up in here, which we call the rural resource lands. And up until a month ago, um, the zoning for that area uh, was uh, under what was called Bylaw 189. Um, and the zoning for that area um, allowed minimum subdivision of 300 acres, but it did not specify how many dwellings could go on the property. As of last month, the CRD has passed two new zoning bylaws that limit subdivision in all this area here to a minimum of 300 acres, and you can only have one dwelling and one detached suite on the property. The reason for that is that this area here is primarily forestry, and the wish was, was to keep it primarily forestry and not have it turned over for any form of development. The area on this side is mostly crown land. This area that you see in light gray, uh, there are some private forest lands in here and Western Forest Products has some of them as does uh, Teal Jones uh, and Warehouser has uh, some private forest lands in here. But this is primarily crown provincial land. The yellow area on this side is primarily private forest land. It's owned mostly by Timber West and by Western Forest Products. Why I'm saying that to you is that although the red areas, which are the properties that Western Forest Products has now put on the market for sale, um, are substantial, what some people do not realize is that compared to this whole other region up in here, they are in fact minuscule. They have a huge impact on us as residents of Water Point and Shirley, but I want you to understand that what people will be talking about this evening will be the highlighted areas in red, but there's all this other huge area that is mostly private forest lands and crown land here with a mixture of some private lands inside. So let's narrow it down to the lands that most people are interested in hearing about this evening. If you look at the map, I put in red the properties that are currently up for sale. These are not, again, all of WFP's properties. They are only a fraction of what WFP owns. But these are the ones that have the most likelihood 
of residential development if they were bought, and there are some reasons for that. <coughs> Many of them are, are along the one if you have a street, which makes them waterfront property, which is very attractive. There's limited waterfront property left in this region. It's all been bought, and it's all been built on. So having a lot of waterfront property makes it uh, attractive for people that might wish to, to live in that area. The other thing is that most of the lands that they have up for sale are within what we call OCP areas, official community plan. All of you, if you live in a community in the Greater Victoria area, you all have an official community plan for your community, and so do we in the Otter Point and Shirley Jordan River area. What makes it attractive to sell land within an official community plan area is that there is zoning there that might allow for residential development, and if it doesn't already, you are allowed to apply to the CRD to possibly have the zoning changed, which would then make it more attractive to have residential development. So let's just look at where the properties are, just to make sure that you understand. This section over here is by the suit potholes. This piece that's below the black line, if you can see it, this lower part is actually within the municipality of Souk. This upper part is within the rural resource lands. Now you would say, yes, well, what's the point in trying to sell this land if the minimum subdivision in this area is now 300 acres? Well, the reason that they're interested in selling this little piece here is, first of all, it is close to the potholes, makes it very attractive, but there's some historical subdivision in this area which makes some of these properties very much smaller than 300 acres and they can be sold as individual properties they do not fall under the bylaw that governs the rest of this area if you come down into here this is otter point in this section here we're immediately west of souk and otter point there's um, about 560 acres of, of uh, forestry land here that is up for sale and then the majority of it is here in Shirley and also in Jordan River. This is Shirley in here. And if you look at the amount of land that uh, Western Forest Products has put up for sale in Shirley, it is uh, almost 40% of the land within the Shirley um, community. And if you also added on the property that Western Forest Products owns in that area that is not up for sale, they probably own something in the order of 60% of the land in that community. So think of your own community, whether you live in Saanich or Victoria or Esquimalt or Oak Bay, imagine one single company owning that much land in your community and then thinking about the impact that would have if they start making decisions without having spoken with the community. And that is part of the dilemma for those of us living in this area is that these decisions that are being made by the province and by the forest companies are not made with any consultation with the local residents. Let me finish up by just talking about the Jordan River. Uh, this is the area here. Um, this land that is in here, for those of you that are close enough to see that it's in the, the orange color, is actually crown land uh, in western owns private forest lands around that. Um, again, they own a massive amount of the land in Jordan River. Um, the two pieces that have been in the news the last uh, several weeks are uh, the actual Jordan River town site where the Surfer Beach is and also Sandcut Beach, uh, which is over here. And the reason that I've highlighted these two is that uh, our regional director, um, had the idea about a month ago that if it was not possible to try and secure all of these lands, uh, that maybe what the CRD should be doing is going after a small portion of the lands that might be most suitable for parkland and for protection in order to keep them in the public domain.